Hello guys, it's Tim here again, here another video. This time I want to do some uh, American Werewolf in London, American Werewolf in Paris. I've been wanting to review these movies for a while now as a double feature. I talked about them in my 69 Favorite Horror Film Reviews, but it's been a while since I've actually, well, I haven't reviewed them, I mean. So I figured I'd do them. It's the month of October. I haven't done a video in a little bit because I've been busy marathon and horror flicks for an October marathon for leading up to Halloween where I'm going to do a big Friday 13th movie marathon. So for American Werewolf in London, most people have seen this. I'm not going to stay on the American Werewolf in London too long. I mean, what more can you really say? Certain movies, when I review them, I don't focus on them too much because there's really nothing more you can add. American Werewolf in London, it's a great film. It's a classic. It's my favorite werewolf film of all time. Second will be Dog Soldiers. Third would be The Howling. Um, it's directed by John Landis, who's a director I like. Personally, though, when I've seen the guy in interviews, he comes off a little douchebaggish to me. But in terms of, like, directing, the dude is good. I think he does a good job. Um, and this is no exception. It's well directed. It's well acted. I will say one thing. The makeup effects in this movie are perfect. This is the best special effects I probably have ever seen in a werewolf film. Um, the transformation is the best I've ever seen. The two American backpackers are hiking through London, um... They get attacked by a werewolf, one gets killed, the other one gets turned into a werewolf. Jenny Gutter is the nurse in this film, and she is hot. Um, and uh, one dude starts turning into a werewolf, and he sees his dead friend appear as a ghost, or kind of like a zombie-type ghost. He keeps deteriorating and rotting every time he shows up. It's a really cool effect. Like, his whole neck is, like, tore open. Um, it just looks amazing. The makeup effects in this film are amazing. They're Oscar-worthy, and I believe they actually did win an Oscar for Best Makeup Effects. It's just great. Uh, you get to the end of the film, the werewolf gets shot down in an alleyway, and it just clicks and starts playing this song like, ba 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 or something like that, something similar to that. It's a really fast ending. This used to bother me back when I was younger, when I first saw the film. Watching it now, it really fits the film in the tone of the horror and the comedy in it. This is a horror comedy that balances itself really well. Like in the theater scene, the he transforms into a werewolf when he's in a porno theater, which is really hilarious. Um... Uh, I will say this, there could have used like maybe one or two shots more of the werewolf when he was actually killing some victims. That would have been cool. Um, there's a really awesome suspense scene when this guy's like on an escalator going up and the werewolf is like, you showing the camera showing like down at the main bottom of it and then you get to see the werewolf like just barely like uh, coming into frame. That was really cool. And I love the look of the werewolf. I actually prefer the more standard werewolf that stands up on two legs instead of the one that like walks on all fours like they have here. But the special effects are so damn awesome. They're great, and they just really work well. It's obvious four-star out of four flick. It's a great flick. It's a classic. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. American Werewolf in Paris, a lot of people hate this flick. They despise it. Personally, I own it because I'm a completist. No matter what the sequel is, I'll buy it. How bad it is because I'm that guy. Uh, honestly... It's not absolutely terrible. It's not good either, but it's not absolutely terrible. It's updated for the 90s. The cast here works fine. Uh, one of the guys I recognize from the movie Rat Race. Uh, he was like the dude with the piercings in Rat Race. He's here. He does fine. Uh, the comedy is updated for 90s, like American Pie type humor. And it works for the decade for the most part. There's some jokes that don't work. Like there's this... Um, like when the main dude is like acting like a wolf and he's like running around sniffing this chick's ass or whatever. That doesn't work. But when he's got like a, a condom in his mouth and he tries to lie to the girl that it's bubblegum. And the girl's put like, I believe Julie Dipley or Depley, I can't even pronounce her name. A French actress, I believe. She's great in the film. Probably the best performance in the film. Uh, Julie Deeply, I think. Might be, I mean, how you say it. But anyway, uh, he's chewing this condom drag like it's bubblegum. It's really silly, but it works. It's funny. Uh, another thing is the ghosts in the film, the... They, they're played more up like Beetlejuice type comedy. It doesn't really work. It doesn't jive. Um, the biggest problem with this film, the biggest problem, the plot is weaker, but it's not horrible. The biggest problem here is the effects. It's all CGI and it's extremely dated. Uh, every now and then you get an okay CGI shot when it's like far away or when it's quick, but when it's like a long transformation or something like that or when two werewolves are fighting, it is terrible. Utterly terrible. When it's just the human cast, it's fine. Pretty much you got these daredevil guys who want to go bungee jumping off the Eiffel Tower. This dude runs into a girl who's trying to commit suicide. He saves her and he starts going after her. He's in love with her. He gets involved with this werewolf cult. And you find out pretty much that she's the daughter of uh, Jenny Gutter who slept with the dude that turned into the werewolf in the first film. Um, what works in this film is that it doesn't feel like a sequel. It feels like its own film. And that's why it works. I've heard other people complain about that, but I, you didn't really need a super direct tie-in to the first film. This works best when it is just its own werewolf story, not trying to be a total direct sequel to the original. And that's the way it should be. I don't think you could do like a real direct sequel to the original film. It wraps itself up too well. Just do another werewolf story in the same universe. I'm fine with that. I see no problem with that. 
Uh, all in all, I'd give this film a low two stars. It's passable. It's not the worst werewolf film I've ever seen. It even has a cool Bush song in here, I believe, called Mouth or something like that. This is a passable flick. It's watchable. But uh, the special effects are the biggest weakness. If these effects were as good as the original film, I'd probably like this movie. Uh, one neat effect is when this uh, dude with like, no legs, who's like the stepfather of the main girl in the film, who's a werewolf, is like strapped on this bed and he's crawling towards uh, this dude trying to eat him. That was kind of a cool effect. It was practical mixed with CGI and it looked pretty good. But yeah, the CGI is the biggest problem. All in all, it's a passable flick. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, it's been fun talking about these two movies after so long. And I'll see you guys again in the next review.